question last week uh, where someone asked wh why why is eyes now a uh, live streamed uh, TV program and to answer that simply is because uh, we can't really go to the university anymore where we would normally go or to your classrooms which uh, you know are pretty much online now uh, this is a way to still get that good quality science uh, that we all know and love through eyes so uh, before we start, I just want to thank everyone that has been tuning in yeah. to these live streams. Uh, you have been awesome with your questions, with your participation. We've seen some photos, and uh, we absolutely love what you're doing here. So from the bottom of our hearts, uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So uh, today, let's start off with introducing our team. Let's do it. All right, to who do we got to the left? To the left? Hello, everybody. My name is Kavina. I'm very happy to be here today. My pronouns are she, her, and uh, I got a little fun fact. One time in high school, I made a trombone. You want to see it? You yes. want to see it? Yeah. Okay. One sec, let me just go down to the basement for a second. <laughs> ah, found it there. This is my homemade trombone. Wow. Okay, it's made with PVC pipe. Um, you want to hear how it sounds? Absolutely. Is this going to be okay? It's going to blow out the mic? You good? <laughs> you, that's all I got. Lovely. I play yeah, better lovely. with a band. I don't have a band here today, sadly, so that's all I got for that you today. That is a okay. But who do I got to the right of me? Who do I got? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kobe. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. And a really, really cool thing that I can do is play the recorder. Yeah, so yeah. I got this in elementary school. And I'm going to <laughs> play a song for everyone. It's a very and musical day. you're going to tweet us at hashtag Couch Potato Lab on what you think this song is. It, um, here's a little hint. It's a pop song by a singer called Ariana Grande. <laughs> Good job, Kobe. Yeah. That's that, that sounded and, uh, much nicer than my uh, trombone. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, I am your host today. My name is Tom. My pronouns are he, him. And uh, a fun fact about me is that they, they always got me sitting on these shows. And I'll let you in on a little secret. It's actually uh, because my legs are just wisps of smoke uh, because I am part Goonie. So they got me sitting down because they said, Tom, you're going to get smoke all over the camera, and we can't have that. Uh, but bringing it back to my two uh, wonderful musician friends. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to ask, can we have a little a little duet from you two? Yes, for yes, sure. Yes, I'm Are into it. Same song? You want to play the Ariana, Ariana Grande one? Yeah, sure. Okay, right, let's count see. Count us in, Tom. Right. Uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah. One, two, two three, three, four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a breath. That was so good. Bravo. Yeah, that was. Bravo. Yeah, that was all right. <laughs> all right. So to begin um, our live stream, we want to first recognize that we are on Treaty Four land and that Eyes is operating from Treaty Four land. This is the traditional territory of the Nahiowak, Nakoe, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota peoples, and this is the, also the traditional homeland of the Métis Mitchif Nation. So we're so be we're so grateful to be able to share the space with these peoples, and we're happy to take a moment and realize this, and for you guys to join us today. So. Um, ding, ding, ding! Oh, I'm getting a call on my phone. Oh, hello. Hi, is this Kobe? Uh, yes, it is. Hi, Kavina. What you doing? Hey, um, I'm doing this live show right now. It's called hashtag The Couch Potato Lab. And oh, sounds fun. So today our show is all about 
bananas. Bananas. So, yes. And I was wondering if I could kick it off with a little chemistry experiment. Ooh, I'm think? very excited for this. All right. Bring yeah. it on. Bring it home. Let's go, Kavina. Right. Okay, hang on. Thank you, Kobe. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Tom, you're the host. Is that okay if we kick things off with a little banana chemistry you know, experiment? I will allow it this time, Kavina. I'll allow it. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Go crazy. All right. Uh, I'm just putting on my protective equipment here. I've got gloves, and I'm just going to throw on some safety glasses as well. What, now, do, we, what do we call that protective mm, equipment? We call this... It's a three-letter acronym. It's called PPE. And what does yeah. it stand for? Personal Protective Equipment. Very cool. Very PPE. cool. PPE. Okay. All right. So today's all about bananas. Why not kick things off and learn a little bit more about what a banana is made out of? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, before the show started, I just mashed up some bananas in a container here. That looks okay. like my baby food. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, so just bananas in there. Uh, unfortunately, folks, I don't think this is an experiment you can do at home. So why don't you watch carefully and experience it with your own eyes here today. Okay? And you know, if you have any questions about what Kavina is doing here, folks, uh, we do have a phone number that you could reach us at. Uh, let me just pull up that number real quick. It is 306-570-1013. Or if you have any questions that you want to reach us on our social media, you can uh, at our handle iZoom. That works for YouTube, for Twitter, for Instagram, and for Facebook. You, uh, and if you're using Twitter, be sure to use that hashtag Couch Potato Lab. All right, I'm gonna bring it back to you, Kavina. Thank you. Okay, so I have my bananas now in two jars, very careful. And now I have two chemicals here, and these chemicals change color to tell us what is in the banana. So the first chemical here. Um, let's do this one. Ooh. Is called universe an, a universal indicator. Ooh. This is a universal indicator here. What does here. that mean? Um, so this is going to tell us whether our acid, uh, whether our <laughs> sorry, this is going to tell us <laughs> if the banana is acidic or basic. So it's going to tell us if we have acid in here or a base in here. Ooh, I mm. think that this banana is probably going to be basic. Really? Basic. Yeah. Basic banana. Basic bananas. Banana. You know, okay. I'm gonna say uh, it's gonna be a, l uh, a pretty acidic. You know, because uh, okay. I like my bananas sour as a lemon, as they say. You're right, Tom. <laughs> um, there's lots of acid in in a lemon as well. So things that are acidic, um, we eat lots of acidic foods like sour things, lemons, sour candies, um, oranges have acid as well. And things that are basic, like Kobe um, is wondering, are things that are usually bitter tasting, like broccoli. And uh, inedible things like soap is also basic. So we're going to see if this is acidic or basic. I'm cool. going to take this in, pour it in, and it might change color. Ooh. If it changes color, it will tell us if this is an acid. You ready? Okay, right. watch closely. I'm going to pour in my indicator. Put the lid on. Okay, watch closely. Whoa. I'm going to give it a little shake. What? It's what? red. So what does that mean if it's red? When it's red, it means there's acid in the banana. Whoa. So our indicator, the little molecules in here changed shape and reflected light a certain way and then made it turn red. Crazy. That is crazy. So it went from green to red. We have acid in our banana. And our second test here is going to tell us if there is starch. And things right. that are starchy, do you guys want to let the folks know at home? Um, starchy things would be like potatoes. <laughs> potatoes are starchy, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. yeah. Rice? Yeah. Is rice Ra Rice yeah. is pretty starchy. Rice has lots of starch in it as well. So if this indicator here changes color, so right now, uh-oh, it just, oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm seeing things. It's a little <laughs> orange right now. If you see, when I swirl it, there we go. Kind of looks like soy sauce. It's a little orange. When I pour it in here, it will turn purple if there is starch hmm. in the banana. Okay. But so. if there's not starch, what color would it change? It's not going to change color if there's oh, an so it's orange if it's no starch. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Ready for this? Okay, All I'm right. going to pour it in. Put the lid on. Ready? What? Whoa. What? That is a very, very dark <laughs> banana. That's that almost too ripe to eat something. <laughs> That is no longer edible <laughs> at all. Banana jam. Yeah, so look at these. We figured out with those uh, chemi um, these chemical tools 
that there is acid and starch in our bananas. So, you know, we keep throwing this word around starch, mm -hmm. but really, what is starch? Uh, is, it, is it some sort of abstract concept like, like wind, or is, it, you know, or is it something that we could actually uh, experience as humans? We do. As humans, we do experience starch every day of our lives when we eat. So starch is something we eat like in potatoes, rice, bananas, and we have um, special enzymes in our body which help break down that starch and digest it in our bodies. So when we eat starch, there's actually enzymes in our saliva that break down that starch for us and turn it into sugar. You know, uh, I have the perfect demonstration uh, to show this, actually. Uh, what I have here are some uh, just regular old soda crackers right here. All right. Uh, you know, nothing too fancy about them. <laughs> Four sides, uh, a little bit of salt on them. Uh, do you also have your crackers with you? Wee oui, wee, oui, I have my cracker. It's ready to be eaten. All right, perfect. So uh, people at home, you could follow along too. Uh, it just takes one soda cracker to blow your mind. What we're going to do is we are going to put the cracker in our mouth and we're not going to chew it at all. Or we're going to chew it a little bit, yeah, but we're, we're not going to swallow it. <laughs> yeah. Big difference. So uh, feel free to crunch on a cracker, but remember not to swallow it. And we're just going to let it hang out in our mouth for a couple minutes. Mm. So uh, pardon the ASMR that's about to go down. All right. So while Kobe and Tom are doing that, I'm just going to explain a little bit about how these enzymes are working. So they're breaking apart those starch molecules. And a starch really is just a long necklace of sugar molecules joined together. So the enzyme actually separates those um, sugar molecules, turning them back into sugar, and then we can taste it. It's going to get sweeter in our mouths. Hmm. Well, right now, mm. my mouth is very dry. So you're going to chew it until it's, you're going to start tasting a sweet cracker. And again, if you have questions for us, like why are we chewing crackers on live television, you could reach us at Eyes Youth. Uh, that is our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. But we also have a phone number right down there below. Feel free to text it anytime, 306-570-1013. <coughs> Remember, kids, don't talk with your mouth full. What are, you guys, are you guys tasting it yet? No. No? You know, a little bit. It's kind of a little sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the amylase, which is the enzyme, it's called amylase. I think it's working. Mm. Do you taste anything? Yeah, it tastes like a cookie now. All right, so mm -hmm. I didn't experience that. Uh, <laughs> I swallowed mine, just uh, couldn't take it anymore. But it did get a little sweet, so um, mm -hmm. I would call that demonstration a success. Mm. Ooh, ooh. Mm. Tastes like candy. <laughs> so sweet. Like a jelly bean. Oh. I don't mean to brag, but I think my amylase enzymes are working a little better than your guys's. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we talked about starch. Uh, what a wonderful little thing that is. But let's get back to uh, the big uh, yellow elephant in the room, and that is bananas. Uh, what are we doing today, Kobe? All right. So today we're going to dissect a banana. But before we do that, we have to learn a little bit more about the anatomical terms that scientists and healthcare professions use when they um, reference a body or their patients. So we're going to use, learn about dissections with a banana. But first, we want to learn about the three planes of the anatomy. So um, let's have the camera direct to Tom. Tom, you'll be our test subject today. All right. I'll just come on out here. Is this, is yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll and come on out here. Kivina will, right. be will be pointing at the different parts of the planes to under give us a better understanding. Mm -hmm. So the first plane that we want to learn is called the transverse plane. And the transverse planes pretty much goes through our body horizontally. So if I were to make a transverse cut um, at Tom, there will be two halves, oh. one with his face, and one with his back, right there. So exactly, back. this right there. Kobe, mm -hmm. I read somewhere else that oh, transverse yeah. means to split the body uh, this way so that I would be arms and a head 
and legs and a feet. Yes, yes, you are correct. correct. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's all right. All right, so if transverse cuts means that if I were to cut Tom, there would be two halves. One would be his body, and the other part would be his legs. Like, like this. Head. Slice. Like yes, there. very good. All right, so the next thing that we're going to talk about, which I was inferring to last time, <laughs> was actually the coronal um, plane. So the coronal plane is if I were to cut Tom, there would be two halves. <laughs> There'll be the front part and the back part. So if you take a look at Tom right now, oh, and what Kavina is pointing to right now. Oh, I am slicing him. Where is yes. it? Tom, there he is. I'm slicing him right down. Yeah, so that would be the coronal cut or the coronal <laughs> plane. Mm -hmm. So we got transverse is right, pretty much cutting right at his belly. We get two halves, his body and his legs. The second one would be the coronal one where we cut in pretty much in the middle, where he gets the front side and the back side. And the last one we're going to learn about is the sagittal plane. Sagittal, sagittal plane is pretty much making a cut right between his eyeballs. So you get two halves, one half with <laughs> his left appendages, and the second half would be with his right appendages. So those are the three different um, planes that we have to learn and know and un truly understand to be able to cut our banana later on. So if we take a look at our banana, let's see and figure out where our cuts would be. Hmm. So um, again, transverse cut, it would be right here in the middle. So we can, let's use our Sharpie and write a letter T right in the middle. So we understand that if I were to make a transverse cut, I would pretty much cut right in the middle. The next one is, the coronal. So the coronal um, cut would be right on the side right here. So you can write a C on the side of the banana. All right, right there. So if I were to cut it, it would be like this. Last but not least, um, the sagittal cut. So the sagittal cut will be right in front. So the sagittal cut would be right down the access of the banana right there. So you get two halves. All right, does that make sense? Yes. Tom. Absolutely. 100% oh, uh, <laughs> it does. Now, uh, all of you at home uh, that have just joined us, you can download this activity that we're going to be doing uh, right here uh, in the link of our YouTube live stream. It is bit.ly backslash couch potato lab. Again, that is bit.ly backslash Couch Potato Lab, it's just right up there. Uh, so feel free to follow along as we make our first incisions. Uh, all right, so let's talk about the peel. You know, uh, the, the thing that makes a banana so recognizable is that orange color, but... Er, orange? <laughs> what kind of bananas are you looking at? Uh, <laughs> you know, I always get bananas and oranges confused. Uh, not a big deal. <laughs> bananas are yellow. We know this as a fact. Uh, some bananas are actually pink, and some bananas can also uh, be brown. Just depends how long you uh, leave them out. Now, this peel, why is it yellow? Uh, it's because it has something called, what are they called, Kavina? Those little, those little things. Oh, starts with a P? Starts with a P. Those are called pigments. 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 And uh, what are, Pig, what are pigments? Pigments? Yeah. Pigments are what give a, a fruit or a plant um, its color. Even in human skin, we have pigments. Very good, yeah. And so the pigment that uh, is in this banana that I believe to be true is uh, carotenoids? Carotenoids, yeah. Carotenoids, yeah. They're the same pigments uh, that make leaves orange in the fall time uh, and red, all sorts of colors. So uh, should we should we get to it? Should we start cutting into our banana? Do you think? Yes. All right. All what right. kind of cut are we going to start with today, Tom? You know, I really liked the idea of starting with that nice uh, transverse cut. Transverse. So, okay. Uh, what are we cutting with today? We are cutting with a butter knife. Uh, if you have a plastic knife, uh, that is awesome. And if you don't feel comfortable using a knife, uh, you can always ask your parents to make the incisions. Uh, again, if you don't feel all right, doing that. So, a transverse cut that is cutting it right in half, but we're gonna we're gonna put it just a little bit lower. I'm gonna put mine right around here. All right, just to open it up. 
Like, you cut all the way through? Uh, nope, just just deep enough that you could feel the flesh uh, and the meaty, soft tissue inside. Transverse cut. Okay. All right. So one at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now this is cutting really well. Um, folks at home, just to let you know, you do not need anything sharper than a butter knife. Okay? All you need is a butter knife. Absolutely. So now our next incision, we're going to turn our banana on its side, that coronal position. Remember, coronal splits the body uh, face to back. So that's exactly how we're going to cut it. Make sure that uh, you lead from your transverse cut right there. As you can see, I went a little bit over. And we're just going to cut all the way up that banana. Now this is a longer cut, of course. Look at that. Surgical Ooh. precision. Toby, you got a really good cut. I like Toby's cut. <laughs> Whoa. So yeah, as you can uh, see, we are now getting very close to opening up our banana. So uh, go ahead and make another transverse cut if you want to, just right there. And it should be able to open up like a little book. Cute. <laughs> so, Kavina. Yeah? Uh, a little birdie told me that bananas might be berries. Yes. Yeah? Is that true? I've heard that rumor. Is that true? Okay, well, I'm not quite sure. I'll be honest. This is my first time dissecting a banana. And no I've way. never really thought about a banana being a berry before. But I came today with the criteria that a fruit needs to meet in order for it to be a berry. So what's that criteria? You want to see? Yes. We'd Kay. love to. Here's the criteria. So in order for a banana to be a berry, it needs to meet these criteria. Can you Ooh. see that? Okay. Banana equals berry. We're not quite sure yet. But the first thing needs to come from a flowering plant. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Are you guys experts on banana plants? Mm, I, I do have a fun fact about banana plants. Yes. Uh, many people think that the banana is a tree. Uh, but I learned just last night that it is actually uh, more of a herbaceous plant, like ginger root. In fact, it's quite uh, closely related to the ginger root. So uh, it's not entirely accurate to call it a tree when it is, ah. in fact, a herbaceous plant. Herbaceous plant. And uh, viewers at home, if you have any fun banana fact, any fun fruit facts, uh, because we love fruit here at Couch Potato Lab. Uh, <laughs> please feel free to send in your questions, your comments, your uh, fun facts. We'd love to hear yeah. about it. Okay, right. so, yeah, you're saying it's a herbaceous plant. And do you want to know another fun fact? Always. Yeah? It is actually the largest flowering herbaceous plant in the world. No, I did not know that. That is true. So yes. it, is, it, it does come from a flower. Then. It does come from, from a flower and a flowering plant. All right, so, we can check that off. Boom, boom. It does come up from a flower. And if you see, the next criteria is that it has to have a skin. And um, plant biologists like to call that the exocarp. Mm -hmm. Now, Tom's uh, been an expert at the <laughs> skin of the banana. Yes, actually, uh, like we were saying before, uh, the skin of the banana is filled with these pigments that we call carotenoids. That's what gives them their bright yellow color. And actually, uh, there's a lot of medicinal uses for bananas, uh, not just on the human body, but also on inanimate objects. I also learned <laughs> that if you rubbed a banana peel on a spinning CD, you know, something that's skipping, you know, maybe you got your favorite hot track on track four, but it's always CD, skipping that. Eh? You just rub a banana peel right on that CD, and uh, it's good to go. I haven't tried that myself, but uh, feel free to try it at home. Yeah. If, if um, kids these days even have CDs. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I'm going to move that for now. All right. But we have met two criteria. It comes from a flower, and it has a skin, an exocarp. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is the mesocarp and to see if this banana actually does have a middle or a flesh. So if you take a look at your dissected banana right here, you can see the inside and the flesh of the banana. But there's a whole bunch of like strings coming out of this banana. And Tom, is this your favorite part of the banana? <laughs> do you like to eat this? Uh, actually, yes, I do. I like to gather all the strings from the banana and eat it like a big old bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> okay, and throw in some tomato sauce. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
All right, so what these um, strings of the banana, it, they're called phloem bundles. And they pretty much act like our veins and our arteries in our bodies. So they pretty much um, transport all the nutrients um, throughout the banana so it can grow properly. So that's what well, they are. So even though they are, they're not really disgusting, they're not gross, they're actually very, very nutritious. They're packed with a whole bunch of nutrients like potassium and vitamin A, vitamin B6, and all of that jazz. So it's very, very important to eat those flesh if you would like. So the fun fact about potassium is that there's a whole bunch of that inside the banana and it's very, very important for our bodies to have potassium because potassium allows us to do muscle contractions and do waves. <gasps> Kavinia, fun fact? No, but you talk about muscle contractions yeah. and so all three of us here, we like to work out <laughs> and lift weights and we like to flex, <laughs> show off our muscles, right? It's true. So true. Um, we are going to show how we can use our uh, potassium in our bodies to contract our muscles right now. We're flexing on three. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, oh, potassium. Awesome. I'm flexing my leg. You can't see it. <laughs> uh, actually, we have. That's how we use potassium. <laughs> we have a great question. This question comes from Dixon. Uh, what Dixon? is the difference between a fruit and a berry? Do we know? <gasps> oh. What's the difference? So. Huh? These things. <laughs> this is what makes a berry. Well, okay, a berry is a type of fruit. And fruits, there's different types of fruits depending on how they grow on a plant. So if they come from the flower or if they come from a different part of the plant, then there are different types of fruits. But a berry comes right from the ovary of a flower and it has to have three layers to it and it has to have more than two seeds. So that's what makes a berry a berry and that's what makes a berry different than other kinds of fruits. All right, thank oh, you very much, perfect. Dixon, for your question. And thanks, Kavina, for uh, filling us in. All ah. right, so taking a look back at, at our um, banana, we're going to take a look at the orientation. So the first thing is that there's a stem and then the, the little black part at the, the black tip right here. So actually, fun fact, that this is the correct orientation of the banana. So mm -hmm. this is the bottom of the banana, and this is the top of the banana. What? So if you peel... <laughs> And you can see that the flesh, there's a black little tip on that banana right here. Yeah. So there's, scientists haven't found a name for this little black tip, but we know that this is a remnant from a flower. So it kind of confirms that bananas do come from flowers. Huh. Yeah. Wow. And you know, if you have any ideas for a name, what we yeah. want to call the, the little black tip on a banana, please feel free to send them in. We'd love to hear it. I'm sure the scientific uh, community uh, concerning bananas, would love to hear it. Uh, yeah, scientists it. need your help. Scientists need your help. This is a real scientific uh, problem that needs solving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you figure something out, maybe they'll name this black tip as your name. <gasps> the, the Tom Kavina. Tip. This oh. could be just be called Marvin. <laughs> you know? Who knows? Uh, looking at you, Marvin. Or Luke's the Donut. We know you're watching. Maybe we can name this part of the banana after you. All right, so the last thing is that the reason why that this banana is like this and that the stem is at the bottom is because it grows from the stem to the top right here. So that's why this is the top and this is the bottom because the banana grows this way. What? All right, yeah, exactly. It defies gravity when it grows? It defies gravity, yes, correct. So well, that's why um, in a herbaceous plant, when it grows from that herbaceous plant, it grows a bit like this. Oh. All right, so things today. this flesh right here is actually called the mesocarp. So, Kavina, <gasps> because this flesh is called the mesocarp, um, is it a berry? Well, it meets another criteria. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. I will check that off the list. Yeah. Mesocarp. That is, that's the edible portion, right? Yes. That is. Amazing. And the mesocarp is also those stringy phloem bundles as well. Mm-hmm. Very cool. That me so corp. All right, I think we have one more section of the banana to discuss, and I think it's one that often gets overlooked because it's too busy being chewed up. Is that correct, <laughs> Kavina? You're very much correct about that. Right. Okay, we are getting closer to solving the mystery if a banana is a berry. So the last step is to look inside. Now we are going to make two transverse cuts to take to 
take out a cross section of the, that banana. So maybe near the bottom, if you want to cut a uh, trans transverse, make a transverse cut that goes all the way through the banana. And then you're going to make another transverse cut about a centimeter up from that. Okay. Now, I have some handy dandy tweezers to get real serious about this. You can use your fingers or use a fork or your knife. And we are going to extract that um, segment of the banana. Ooh, here we go. Kavina, should I oh. eat this banana later? <gasps> should you eat it? Yeah. No. No, we why? Why not? We've been handling this with our hands. We don't know True. if we've washed our hands before. And the thing is, should we be eating science? No. No. We shouldn't <laughs> eat science unless it is purpose, unless it's like baking. Baking is science. But it's true. Okay, so we have our cross section here. Um, now, if you look closely, you're going to notice that a, a banana is actually made of three segments, and those are called locules. <laughs> locules. <laughs> and each segment is actually identical to the other segments. So there's three identical segments. To, to find those segments, what you can actually do is just gently squeeze on the um, your cut and it'll start to break apart, and it'll break apart into those segments. Ready? Oh. One. Oh. Here's one. Take it down. <laughs> and two, three. You know, it doesn't take much to impress That's me. A locule. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the locules. And in each locule, there is a strand of seeds, and there is also um, a little softer, more liquidy flesh, and that is called the endocarp. Oh, <gasps> endocarp. Yes. endocarp. That, and in that sounds uh, real familiar, but go does on. Does sound familiar. We're going to get to that in a second. So inside the endocarp is where the seeds are kept. Now the endocarp in some fruits helps protect those seeds and also provide nutrients to those seeds. Okay. So to look a little closely at the inside of the banana, now we're going to do a sagittal cut, which sagittal. we haven't done yet. Do you all remember that one? Uh, is that the one where it splits the body in half, uh, head to toe? Yeah. So that was like if when Tom was standing here, we would make a um, an in, uh, cut in between his eyeballs. All right. So we're gonna do make, make a sagittal cut all the way down the banana. Oh, the line is not very centered. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. And once you make that sagittal cut, you can open up your banana. Prop it open. Whoa. But, uh, I'm Whoa, think. what are these black things Ooh, inside the, black the things. banana? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have your two halves. You can, ex you can extract the exocarp from your dissection tray. You won't need that. Okay, so if you look, you can see that endocarp a little cl more closely. So we have the mesocarp, which is the more firmer flesh. And then inside, we have the endocarp, which is softer. So those little black things are the seeds. Now, here's the thing though. The bananas we eat today don't actually have true seeds. What do you mean? Well, we call this basically a seedless banana because the seeds are, they're not real. They're called immature seeds. Normally in a wild banana, the seeds are about 10 times the size of this. Um, yeah, so farmers and scientists have figured out how to make these bananas seedless. Uh, so the seeds that you're going to find in this banana try to plant them, you can't actually plant a, a new banana plant from it. Well, there they goes my summer project. <laughs> there goes Tom's summer project. Okay, so you can try if you want. You can extract maybe with some tweezers and extract some of those black seeds. And if you try to plant them, you can't plant a banana plant. Now, you guys might be thinking now, how do you make more banana plants if the seeds don't work? Mm. Yes. Always. Yes, I am. Do you know? Mm, I'm. I, I mean, I know, Let's but does Covey know? I don't know. You don't know. That. Okay, so the way we can plant more banana plants is just by taking part of the root of the plant and replanting that. Cool. And even at the end of the year, um, when the tree has made all of its fruit and it dies, then the roots actually regrow into new banana plants. Oh. Mm -hmm. So hey. the seeds aren't for anything. Hey, Kev, I have a quick question. So you said that um, th these bananas also have seeds and that the wild bananas have seeds that are bigger. 
Sea seeds are edible. Are the wild seeds edible as well? The thing is, like, th- these wild bananas have um, gigantic seeds. How did these bananas have really, really tiny seeds? What happened there? I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's kind of confusing. So two things could have happened. One, this could have been a random chance where there was one banana tree that all of a sudden didn't have seeds in it, and people opened up those bananas and looked at them, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, this is a miracle! <laughs> I don't have to spit the seeds out. I can just eat it." And so what they did is they replanted that banana by replanting the roots. And then ever since then, we've been using the new mutated bananas. Mutated bananas. Or farmers, what they can do is they can take one kind of banana, another kind of banana, and crossbreed them together and plant them. And then the crossbreeding version can be a completely new kind of banana. Mm-hmm. And that new kind of banana might have been one without seeds. And then... Ever since then, we started planting those bananas instead. Oh, is there a type of, is there a name for this banana that we always see in stores? Yeah, this kind of banana that we eat all the time is called the Cavendish banana. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Cavendish. Uh, Cavendish banana. You know, we have a a suggestion uh, for the name of the black tip on a banana. This comes from Isabella and Dixon. Uh, Hello. First name for, uh, it's just called... Don't eat the black part. <laughs> you know what? I love it. Uh, I agree. It's, it's simple. It's inedible. Uh, so thank you, Isabella and Dixon, for your consideration. Uh, we will we will be, you know, we have it in the notebook. We're considering it. So, Kavina, you, we cut open a banana, and it has this uh, inner sort of workings, this sort of, uh, some would say, inner uh, flesh. Uh, yes. Scientists might even call this uh, the endocarp. The endocarp is right. And that meets the criteria of a berry. A berry must have an endocarp. And that's that soft flesh that protects the seeds. So, ba- bam, we have an endocarp in a banana. And the last criteria was that a berry needs to have more than two seeds. Now, if you look at a banana closely, although these aren't true seeds, we can still count them. And there is more, definitely more than two. Definitely if you want to count all the, bana- all the seeds in a banana and send us the answers, we would love to know. But we don't have the time today. It's okay. So it has more than two. Ready? But bam So a banana is a berry. We have concluded scientifically that uh, your favorite yellow fruit is, in fact, a berry. But, you know, uh, people have just been... Uh, you know, just ringing up the live stream asking, is a tomato a berry as well? Because we know that we always say tomato is a fruit as a little fun fact, but is it a true berry? Let's let's go to our criteria board and see. Uh, tomatoes, do they come from a flower? They do. They do. They do. Uh, do tomatoes have a skin? Yes. They do. Absolutely. Do they got that sweet, sweet flesh? <laughs> yes, they, they do. do. Do they have uh, something inside that flesh, like an inner watery, seedy area. They do. When you cut open that tomato and all the juices flow out, most yeah. of that is the, is the endocarp. Mm-hmm. And does it have more than two seeds? It does. Oh, it do. So to answer your questions, uh, viewers, it does, in fact, uh, meet the criteria. So a tomato is a berry. Again, thank you for all your questions. Uh, we love answering them. <laughs> oh, I thought that was going to be smoother. Uh, Working on that. Again, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, use that hashtag Couch Potato Labs. It's just right there on your screen. All right. So um, I am feeling a little lonely, and I just need another friend with us today. Kobe, we're here for you. I know. I know. It's just that, like, I need one more. Because, like, the more the merrier, hey? So I'm going to actually call one of my friends right now. (gasps) What? All right. right. Yes. I'm going to ring up my banana phone. (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. Who do we have? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello? Sabrina? Yes, it's me, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. How are you? (laughs) so good how are you i'm great too i just like really missed you bro girl friend and i just need you to come to our live stream today like right now right now like you want i need you here now get on over here yes well sure sabrina what's up sabrina it was a long drive but i made it thank you for coming 
How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. All right. Introduce yourself. Okay. I'm new. I'm Sabrina. <laughs> uh, my pronouns are she and her. And you've been talking all about fruits and berries today. It's true. So I have a fun fact for you Ooh. about lemons. Tom has also been talking about lemons. I'm just going to put this down now. So <laughs> <laughs> got a mic and I love lemons, so mm -hmm. if there's a lemon in my drink, I'll just like eat the lemon like an orange. Mm -hmm. But I hate what? lemon on anything else. Interesting. Like really? On food. I lemon. Eat it whole or not at all. Lemon meringue pie? No. Can't say no to that. No. I wow. Say no to that. Oh my god, lemon chicken? Mm -mm. What? Something else. I'll eat it, but I just the whole lemon <laughs> is just great. That's very so rebellious of you. Clearly, <laughs> Sabrina's a little. Wacky, I would like to say, in a good way. So I think you, you fit this show very well. Sabrina, what do you say you come on for the next episode? Huh? <gasps> me? Yeah? Yes, you. you. Like on the show? Yeah, yeah, do you want to be on the show? Yes, I'd love yeah. to be All right, show. come this Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, we'll be doing something really cool with bananas again. Oh, I love bananas. I know, right? Yeah. I'll Thursday at 1 p.m. Are you going to be there? I'll be there. Bring my okay. banana. All right. Folks but at home, you better be there too. All right, so bananas. We need you to be an expert about bananas, though. That's why you got the job. I'm nervous yeah. now. I'm nervous. Okay, so we're going to test you yes. and quiz you about banana facts, and you have to get them all correct. Or else this you can't leave. stressful. I'll all right. First question, Sabrina. Are bananas a fruit or a berry? They're definitely a fruit. Yes. That is my answer. All right. Very good. They're so a fruit. <laughs> Are they a berry? Well, if I was watching closely to your nice little whiteboard over there, I would have to say yes, they are also a berry. Yes! Ding, 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 she got it good. right! Nicely Good work. done. Excellent work. All right, Tom, give her another one. All right, uh, just to make sure that you were listening, uh, here is here's a banana. I'll hold it for the viewers at home uh, right here, and then I'm going to show Sabrina real quick. All right? This, this little cut that I made down here, all right? Right down the middle. What kind of cut was that? And I have a multiple choice. Is it A, <laughs> sagittal? Is it B, sagittarius? I am that. That is me. <laughs> or is it C, uh, Spaghetti squash. <laughs> Definitely not C. I'm going to have to go with A. A. Sagittal. Sagittal. She got it right. Woo! Very good. All right. Good. Last one, Kavina. Sabrina, you are killing it. I know you were meant for this show. Oh, so okay. Last question. Wait, okay. Kavina, wait, wait, wait. What happens if I get them all right? Something has to If happen. you get them all right, <laughs> Kobe has to do a dare. <gasps> okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah? Okay. All right. Okay. I'm Sabrina, ready. your question is, so remember, I was telling you, these uh, black banana seeds in here aren't true seeds. They can't be planted to make a new banana plant. Right. So how do banana plants get planted? From the roots. <gasps> I think she's right. Ding, 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 ding. I think she's one nice. She got it right. Ooh. All right, all right. Ooh, OK, so now <laughs> Kobe, I guess, has to do a dare. Hmm, I actually haven't thought of one yet. <laughs> you know. I'm thinking. Yeah, do you have no, one? you got one. Do you want to? Oh, no, we can't. Get too uh, close. Social distancing yep. still applies. I was thinking maybe he needs to attempt a juggling act using banana peels. I, I couldn't agree more. I was just going to suggest that. All right. So. Kobe, we're going to. What? Hey, I got my hands. Banana here. peels? <laughs> okay. All right. So, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We don't want to get too close. So, we have these <laughs> big, giant hands that are connected on hockey sticks. And we're going to pass the banana peels over to Kobe. Thank you. Kobe, why wow. you do you think you could stand in the middle? Oh, no. Actually, this is perfect. <laughs> this the is perfect. Is, yeah. <laughs> you are going to attempt to juggle the and banana you know, peels. Uh, while, he, while he gets ready, uh, we have our fan favorite, Luke the Donut, uh, yes. with their suggestion that the black part of the donut should be called, and uh, forgive me if I'm uh, not pronouncing this correctly, Floss... Finesse. Interesting. Floss, Floss like finesse, this. like this? Floss finesse. Floss finesse. Is it Latin? Is it Greek? Finessing uh, your flossing moves? Oh. Yeah. We'll never know. But thank you, Luke the <laughs> Whoa, Donut, fan favorite. <laughs> All right, Kobe. I am ready. Are you ready, Serena? I'll so ready. sing you a little circus song, okay? 
dun 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 Gotta keep going until Oh my gosh. Now, if you're enjoying what you're seeing today, if you think that this is quality programming, uh, watching a grown man juggle banana peel, uh, feel free to tune in uh, every Tuesday and Thursday to this show. We're always on YouTube around 1 p.m. Uh, using the Couch Potato Lab uh, hashtag will be there. Uh, Eyes Youth, as always. Um. All right. So um, that wasn't very exciting, but thank you, Sabrina, for coming Sabrina, on the show for you. today. Thanks, Sabrina. Uh, and we'll I'll see you Thursday. 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 All right, We're going to see you Sabrina. then. Bye, All Sabrina. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Sabrina. <coughs> we have a question from Amelia. Why did the banana from the beginning turn brown? And you know what? I was hoping someone was going to ask this because uh, I, I'm not sure if you're referring to the starch test that we are doing or if we're talking about uh, the actual banana peel turning brown. Uh, we can talk about both. We can talk about both really mm -hmm. quickly. Uh, a banana will turn brown because of a chemical process called oxidation. And that's when all uh, the oxygen that's in the atmosphere will uh, hit the cells that normally don't use oxygen and it creates this chemical reaction that we see in apples uh, in many other different fruits. That's why we get browning. It's called oxidation. Now, Kavina, mm -hmm. why, did, uh, why did it turn brown kind of purple now? Yes, this uh, turned black purple because <laughs> of the way the uh, iodine in this reagent actually fits inside of the starch molecules. So a starch is a spiral shape, almost like a slinky if you were to pull it apart. And the iodine, which is in the chemical, fits inside of that spiral shape, and it deflects light in different ways, and that's what gives it the dark color, is the spiral shape with the iodine inside. Thank you very much yeah. for your question, Amelia. Uh, it is now for our favorite segment, Ask the Scientists, uh, mm. where we ask scientists uh, questions, fun facts that they learn, all that wonderful stuff. So uh, let's start with our good friend, Kovi our resident animal physiologist, oh. some would yes. say. Kobe, did you learn, uh, what was the favorite thing that you learned this year? This year? This year. This whole year. This whole year. This whole year. This whole year. Um, uh, this whole <laughs> year, my favorite thing is that sharks have cool vision where they can see electromagnetic radiation, and that's how they like detect their prey and find and hunt them down. No way. Yeah. What? That's a great. Fun and fact. you know, Kobe, we have one more question for you. Hit me. Uh, this one's from last week. What is the heaviest Pokemon? <laughs> Celesteely. Cel Celestela. Perfect. Say it one more time. Celestela, legendary Pokemon from Sun and Moon. <laughs> wow. I thought that was a pasta. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, turning to my wonderful scientist friend on the left, just uh -huh. to finish off this quick segment, Kavina. Kovi, what's your question for Kavina? Kavina. My question for you today is, what is the heaviest animal in the world? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Am I supposed to know this? Yes. Yes. Give me a hint. It lives in the water. Whale shark. <gasps> Close. Uh, is it a shark or a whale? Whale. Oh, pfft. blue whale. Ding, blue ding, whale. ding, ding. Yeah, it's nice to see The heaviest candy in the world. Uh, this has been Ask the Scientists. Uh, thank you very much for all your questions. Uh, oh, Luke the Donut always checking in with us. Yes. Uh, they say that Flo Spinis is Latin for flower end. So Ooh. that is perfectly scientific because scientists often name stuff uh, using Latin. So Luke the Donut, uh, our hats go off to you as always. And this has been the Couch Potato Lab. Uh, again, we, we're still adjusting to what a live stream is, and we can't thank you enough for being very patient, being here every week with us, sharing this wonderful thing that science is, uh, and making sure that it's nice and accessible. A special shout out going out to the grade seven, eight students from none other than DeShay School. What's up? Uh, Hello. So thank you everyone for tuning in. You guys rock. Um, well, I think that's all the time that we have. So, uh, my name has been Tom. I'm Kovi. My name's Kavina. And uh, 
here are some of our sponsors that make it all possible. And Thank supporters. You very much. Yes, and supporters. Uh <laughs>